What is up my friend? Thank you so much for being here. I just got back from being on the road for about a little over a month, I think, something around that. I completely lose track of time when I'm away. But if you follow me on social media, you may have seen something about me going off grid. And going off grid is something that I do quite often. I make it a bit of a regular practice in my life because I believe that as a creative, taking time away from the digital world that has sort of taken such a huge precedence in our society is a vital part of staying creatively inspired, especially if you've decided to make a career out of your creative work. It's really easy to fall into a path of getting very quickly burnt out. And I think there are a few ways, there's quite a few ways that we can combat that. And there's all kinds of great articles and blogs and videos out there about how to prevent burnout. I certainly don't claim to be an expert on this topic at all. This, So take this for what it's worth. And with a grain of salt, this is just something that has worked for me. Maybe it's something that will help you along in your creative journey as well. So today we're gonna to talk about how to make the most of your time off grid. If you're wondering like what going off grid even is, I actually made a video all about that. So you can click pause here, go watch that one first and come back. But if you've already seen it, let's get right into it. How to make the most of your time off grid. Let's go. So if you see my other video, you know that going off grid is about unplugging from screens. I'm not talking about living without electricity per se, even though that's pretty darn cool too. And I've done that and really enjoy it <laughs> getting out into those woods. But going off grid to me means more about unplugging from all the things that demand our attention. In our day-to-day -day lives, we usually have a device like this sitting next to us, maybe at our desk constantly buzzing or going off with messages and emails and things demanding our attention. A lot of times there's this kind of busyness and hectic, hecticness that surrounds our day-to-day -day lives, most of which I think is on the digital side of things. Most of it comes from our phones, our emails, our social media, things like that. So. One of the things I've constantly kept coming back to in my creative career when I feel like I don't have time for anything is how do I how do I find the free time in my, let's face it, busy schedule. And there's nothing wrong with having a busy schedule, but there's a difference between being healthfully busy and productive is what I really like to call it, is being creatively productive and enjoying life in a healthy way. On the flip side of that coin, you have being way overly busy with a lot of things that are just draining and sapping your time that don't necessarily need to be. So going off grid for me is all about identifying what those things are and unplugging from them, taking time to do the things you actually love doing and therefore fueling your creative career because your creativity is fueled by every other area of your life and what you're doing with it, how you're nourishing yourself, body, body, mind, and spirit, <laughs> body, mind, and spirit. Now, one of the things that can tend to happen, and it's happened to me before, and it's a bit of a pitfall of going off grid, is getting away from social media, getting away from all the busy, Ness in your life and going off, maybe you're going to the ocean, maybe you're going into the woods for a hike or something like that, going somewhere tranquil and completely different and you get there and you're like, now what? <laughs> and then inadvertently your vacation or your time planned away starts to get full of either thinking about work and what you have to do when you get home or kind of sneaking work into the vacation, or all kinds of other things that you didn't even plan on doing that make you just as busy on your trip as you were when you were at home. And that never really leads anywhere good. Usually you get home feeling just as drained as when you left because you're like, what, what even was that? I don't feel like I really replenished. See, replenishing for me is something that I have to plan a bit. I'm not a big planner, so it's not rigid planning, but it is indeed a bit of planning and consciously going about my day-to-day -day life when I'm off grid. For this particular trip, which was a cross-country road trip, I decided to 
write down a plan. I used a notebook app on my phone to make a list of the things that I wanted to accomplish while I was away. My goals for my trip off grid. And my day-to-day -day goals for the trip sounded a little bit like this. Practicing French every day, meditating every day, going for hikes, going for runs and spending time with family. So those were a few goals that I wrote down and they were mostly things that bring me joy outside of my day-to-day -day workflow. So I knew that by doing those things and by taking time to do the things that I don't necessarily have loads of time for in my normal everyday life, that would really act as a replenisher for this time that I was away to help me be more nourished and creative and inspired to get back into the workflow when I returned home. I think it's really important when you take time off grid, the whole point should be, at least for me, to get away from the normal routine of what you normally do every single day. So when I'm off grid, I like to really dive into those things and identify what are some things that I've been really wanting to do, like something that you would do on a weekend, something that just brings you pure joy. So if you're planning on going on an off grid trip or just taking some time off grid and not going anywhere, which is totally legit and I highly recommend it, even if it's only for two or three days. Start with a piece of paper or with a notebook app on your phone and make a list of a few goals that you would like, to, things that you would like to do, things that bring you joy. And if you don't necessarily off the top of your head know what those things are for you, think back over the past year and what some of the happiest times were for you. What were you doing at those times? Maybe that would be a good indicator of things that could help you to replenish and recharge something that would bring you joy. Come up with a plan. Don't just let your time off grid sort of ebb away. What do you want out of the trip? For me, I wanted to gain a sense of mental clarity and creative inspiration for when I returned home to continue writing and continue making videos. So think about what would I like to achieve from this time away from everything that I normally do. This is a sacred, wonderful time for you to be able to explore a bit more about yourself and replenish and recharge. Finding sources of happiness and joy and fulfillment in our lives is what fuels our creativity. Creativity and creative success doesn't come first to then produce happiness, happiness comes first to produce creativity and inspiration. At the end of the trip, I actually wrote a second list that was things that the trip had brought about for me mentally and emotionally, things that helped me to achieve clarity and what that clarity looked like for me. So I had a clear list also going homeward bound. Hey, what is it that I learned from this trip? Did I get to do those things that I listed at the outset? And what did it make me realize about myself? What did it make me realize about my creativity? What do I feel now? What do I feel inspired to do? Because I did all those things. And even though this sounds a bit broad, it actually worked for me really, really well. I went into the trip with a plan of what I wanted to do, what I wanted to spend time on, and how I wanted to optimize my time being completely unplugged and it really created in me a lot of clarity, a lot of inspiration and uh, even an eagerness to go home and get started on some of the things that I've been wanting to work on. So this is, this works. It's scientifically proven too. There's so many cool studies out there now talking about unplugging, taking time away from phones and distractions, how we live in a day and age where we have so much bombarding us all the time that it can be sometimes hard to hear our own thoughts. So I think that taking time away from all of that is good, but we also have to go into it with a bit of a plan to make the most of our time to really figure out what it is we, what is our goal? What do we want to achieve? Is it, is it um, mental clarity? Is it, um, inner peace? Is it finding more wisdom? So those are a few of the things that I did this past trip that really, really helped me. If you're planning on going off grid, I actually made a little sheet that is a free printable that you can access if you'd like with the link below. That's just a little bit of a guide of how I wrote out my list and you can fill it in with your own goals and things you want to work on on your time off grid. And it can be just kind of a fun thing to print out and stick in your wallet or tape to your 
fridge in your camper or to the side of your tent. Comment below and tell me what you think of this video. Tell me what you think of the concept of going off grid. Have you ever gone off grid? Do you wanna go off grid? I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much, my friend, for watching this video. If you liked it, it really means a lot when you give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if you wanna see exclusive videos, short stories, and a creative podcast that I release every month, head over to my Patreon and check out the tiers there. I so appreciate your support. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching this video. Have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one. Stay creative, my friend, and stay stoked. Shh.